Hey everyone. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit about Nowhere Man and how I played it in the video, which is in the description. Man, a lot of times people ask me on these videos how I play the chords or the tabs. It means a lot to me because I show you guys the final product, you know, but that's after several hours of practice and actually figuring the song out and from my experience and nothing against people that write tabs I have personally found that tabs are pretty inaccurate so usually when I'm attempting a song I'll try to figure it out by ear uh, as best that I can and uh, yeah let's get started okay so I'm gonna play this on my Rickenbacker it's really not accurate I guess you could say because it's pretty well known that the Beatles play this song on a Stratocaster however I don't have access to one at this moment so I used the Rick, I think that it sounds pretty good, it's close enough I guess. Doing it through my Fender amp, uh, which you saw at the beginning of the video, it's got a little bit of distortion on it, so yeah. The main riff that you hear over and over again is this, which is just based off an E chord, you know, a simple, but they kind of do this little riff in between, which is what you're really hearing in the E chord is this. Even though you're playing the whole thing, you kind of want that B to shine because that's that open B string is really what makes the riff cool. Play it with the E chord, but kind of go into the riff. I did it like this. Now something else that, I mean, I don't know if this is correct. I haven't seen other people doing it. When I listen to the recording, I hear a little bit of a, I guess you could say a swell. The tone of that last note kind of goes like it's uh, being trembled a little, a little bit, like this. That's a little bit exaggerated to kind of show you what I mean, but when I played the song on the, uh, the video, I did it like this. I don't know if you want to do it like that, but that's what I hear when I listen to the Beatles recording. Uh, something else, even though every other riff is like that, the very first riff of the song is actually slightly different. <laughs> essentially an E7, which would be this, with the open D, so an E7 with an open D note would be this, and I noticed the Beatles also add these two notes to that chord. Sounds weird, I know, but this is what it ends up sounding like all together. I know it doesn't sound proper, but it's like this. And uh, if you listen to the recording, that's what happens. Something else about this, this chord is really difficult to play because you kind of got to put, you got to hit the F sharp with your ring finger and you got to hit the D with your pinky, which is like an additional E seventh, you know? So the whole chord is, and then play the riff after that. For some reason, they don't use that chord the rest of the song, I guess it's part of the opening. It's kind of a weird positioning. My guess is that the Beatles probably didn't have anyone play that chord like that. Um, I'm doing it like that because that's how you can do it on one guitar. I've heard that they recorded that song with two people playing Stratocasters at the same time. That's actually a perfect combination of two chords, which is an E with an F sharp in the top, which is this, with an E7 like this. I would say that John Lennon probably played the more traditional E7, or Paul McCartney, kind of forgot who played guitar, but I'm guessing it's these two chords, and this, slammed into one, and when you do it, it kind of sounds like this. And don't forget to put that volume swell on the bottom. So the bridge sections actually have a very, very subtle electric guitar part in it where you'll kind of hear it at the end, um, and really it's just this, it's very light on the B string, it's like this. That kind of goes back to the E note at the end. Okay, so the solo is pretty much more or less the same kind of feel of the song, it's a lot of chord based stuff, so... Okay, so something else to remember about the solo is that when you're going to the B chord, which is actually the second chord, just to show you it's... Don't play the B chord like I just did, like this. Because what you're going to have to do is there's an open E string that goes... And 
there's a couple ways to do this. If you feel more comfortable, you can plan A and move it up. My fingers are a little crunched on this, so the way that I do it personally is I use my ring finger to kind of bar it on the B string, but still leaving the E open on the top, so like this. So the, the first two of the solo are... Which is basically just the picking of the E and the B string open together. And then you go to the second one, which is... The third thing is the A chord, which I, for some reason, play it bunched up. Um, it's a little not as crunched as up here on the B. Um, so I play it the traditional way, and it's just the same thing. It's a picking style. It's always the two bottom strings. You want to play that last note twice. The Beatles kind of do it a little messy, so do it like kind of like part of the chord, you know, like... So, so far we've got... So then we go back to the E, which is this. And that's kind of like an E sustain 4, you're hitting this note. So instead of a regular E... It's basically you're E sustain 4-ing it, but do it like a chord. So again, like... That's what makes the solo look so cool, it's because the whole song is based on like chord riffs and not really so much single notes. And so the last two parts are... The cool part here is that really what you have is an F sharp minor to an A minor. But because F sharp minor has an A chord in it, you play an A. So you go. And then hit the note after, which is this. It's fourth fret on the D string, so. Now go to an A minor. And hit a C bass chord. So we have. And then this is the last part. Now I know a lot of people want to are tempted to go down here and go I don't think the Beatles did that I would have done this that's the way that I would have done it just because I think the slide is a little bit more I guess pronounced when you do it like that so the whole solo over and over is uh harmonic can be a little bit tricky so practice it obviously I need to do that a little bit more okay so the only other variation in lead guitar is at the end where there is a little bit change to the riff what they do at this point is that the riff changes to that's because there's a little turnaround right there so it sounds like this That's the whole outro. Normally you would do this and you would go to this B note. So you would hear on the outro, do the, don't go to the B, go to this note instead. So you're gonna go. You see what I mean? And uh, again, I like those volume swells a lot. I feel like that you can really hear that on the recording.